you know, I never thought I could hate Michael Bay more than when I got out of this movie. So, Bumblebee. Best live-action Transformers film I've ever seen. And it's not even like one of those, oh, it's so bad, but you know what, it's better than The Last of Them. It's not like comparing a Tyler Perry movie and going, this is the best Medea movie ever. I only had to vomit four times watching it. No, well, Bumblebee's actually well-written, well-directed, well-paced, great music selection, and, you know, the best part about it, there's none of this. Oh, action, yes, this is action, 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 action. I apologize for anyone who I might have given a seizure in that process, but yeah, you know that BS shaky cam that we got used to over the last couple of films? Well, shock of all shocks, it's actually gone. In, in this place, we have coherent action, well set up set pieces, enjoyable action between a couple of characters, and here's the best part, you can tell who is who! Amazing! It's almost like if you embrace the primary colors, it's easier to see, especially when you have fight scenes at night. Or in an arid desert, where gray and brown and all that stuff mesh together and you can't tell who is who. But yes, this is technically a canonical prequel to the original Transformers films, but saying that would be like the inverse of the prequels to the actual Star Wars trilogy. Though granted, with these day and age, I can imagine that prequel is getting a lot of less heat considering <clears throat> Last Jedi. <clears throat> Sorry, I was coughing there. Hmm. Last Jedi. But yeah, Bumblebee. I loved it. Like, no joke, compared to the last three movies I've seen, it was Spider-Verse, Aquaman, and now this. Honestly, I love it. <laughs> this is actually one film I could probably see myself sitting down and watching again, unironically like I do with the original Transformers. And here's the best part. For the longest time, Michael Bay has had a long-running trope when it comes to his Transformers films. One, sexualizing women to the point that even Frank Miller would have to go, ugh. And I'm not one of those people who go, sexism for everything. No, 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 I'm serious. This guy literally made every single female look like she was nothing but a pin up prostitute. Including, but not limited to, the underage 17-year-old and even the more underage 13-year-old. Nope, never let that go. Michael Bay, I hope you rot in the eternal pits of hell while Satan shoves a pitchfork up your butt. Meanwhile, the crew who actually made this movie... Golf clap, golf clap. Very well done, very well done. Are there issues with this movie? Definitely. For example, you can kind of tell exactly what's going to happen if you've ever seen one of those Hydra Pet type movies or E.T. But this was enjoyable. Honestly, besides the whole sexualizing of the women thing, which, shock of all shocks, we get a strong, independent female character with character growth throughout the movie. Man, I haven't seen that in a long time without it being shoved down my throat. Seriously, Brie Larson and everybody who shields Rey from the Star Wars film. You think those are strong female characters? Yeah, um, here's what's her name for that movie. I apologize for forgetting it. It's been a while. I saw this about a week ago and the original video got destroyed. Well, they get a transfer issue. Seriously, need a new phone and a new laptop ASAP. But, besides that... She was an actually well-enjoyable character. And the best part is, I actually enjoyed seeing her grow. When she was being independent and strong, it felt natural. There was backup to her story. There was actual growth. You could see where everything was connected. And even more so, she fails! Shock of all shock, you can have characters fail. And that's kind of what this film shows. In the beginning, Bumblebee fails. In the beginning, she fails. In the beginning, the freaking pseudo kind of... I don't even want to say boyfriend, because it's not even a love relationship at the end, which I freaking love. I'm sorry, but one heroic moment, or one moment of you guys banding together in a sense of not dying, doesn't make a relationship. Yeah, they do that in every single movie, and sometimes I can buy it, most of the time I don't, but I roll with it. This film, they don't get together at the end. She is a, you know, they become friends, and there might be something more, but they don't do it there, they don't dress it there, because it's only been 24 hours. And... That brings to the other fact. The side characters are enjoyable. The Decepticons are actually, well, deceptive. They come in and play the good guys, the honorable guys trying to hunt down this fugitive. Because technically the Autobots are rebels in this universe. And just how they go about it is amazing. Well, not really much I can say beyond that except this was a really good film. And I feel horrible for what has come to this. 
Looking at his numbers, it's not going to make back what it should and it might not even make enough to technically warrant itself a successful profit. And I blame that solely on three things. Number one, Michael Bay. I should be holding up the middle finger for that one, but you get the idea. Everything he's done beforehand and getting himself away from this has left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. He has set himself up to literally fail this franchise. You could create Citizen Kane and he would still find a way to it up. At some point, he did. Regardless of what you feel, a lot of people after the last night were done. And a lot of people were even done before that one with Age of Extinction. So, because of that, there's a negative connotation for this film. And if you don't want to see this film because you hated the other Transformers films, I cannot fault you. I went into this movie thinking it was garbage because, well, number two, it's a side story prequel. First off, whether or not you like Solo, and I kind of have a softer spot for it than most people would... And it has grown on me over time, because I think a lot of my hatred for that did stem from The Last Jedi. Really should have put that high on my top 10 worst list, but it is what it is. But instead, we get this. Even though it's a side story, and while I did have a soft spot for Solo, a lot of people didn't want to see it because it is a side story. They want to see the main canonical story. That's why a lot of the Marvel films, even if you don't want to see them, you kind of have to, because they all lead into another with the exception of the Netflix series, and I'm not even going to get started on Punisher's new villain. Can't be worse than the Black Lightning one, but for another day. But, yeah, with Michael Bay screwing it up, this being a side story, and three, and I cannot fault this enough, it came with horrible movies surrounding it. And I mean, horrible says that they were good, big name ones that you were going to want to see. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, Aquaman, Mary Poppins. Hell, Sherlock Holmes and Wa- I'm sorry, Holmes and Watson. You know, see that one in a minute for that, or how long it takes for me to upload it after this one. But with all those movies, it takes it away. And with it being Christmas, not a lot of people want to see a Transformers film around Christmas. Sad to say, it actually no joke makes me a little sad that I don't think this movie will do as good as it should because it really deserves it. The people who spent time and effort on this have my deepest sympathy. Because it would have been so easy to follow the same schlock. It would have been so easy just to half-naked woman straddling a car going, Oh yes, I know exactly what I'm doing. She'd do that. Seriously, no one knows that weird head roll they always do. I mean, say what you will about my schizophrenia with my hands and all that crud while these videos. But at least I don't make a big deal out of it and it's not an hour-long process on the big screen. But seriously, they spent time and effort. And the parents, the parents are actually good in this film. They're real and legit and not talking about deep wang or smoking pope, pope, <laughs> smoking pot brownies. No, I haven't had any of those. Or freaking Shia LaBeouf's massive male phallic symbol. I'm not going to finish that, but you get the idea. These ones are actually kind, considerate. And want to move on past a very tragic moment that happened in their life. Even the stepfather, which you think would be the one you would hate. He tries. He fails miserably because this is set in the 80s where parenting was a lot more the residual of the hippie love. So a lot more free love and everything. But eh, better than what we get nowadays. But he tries. And when his stepdaughter is in danger, the dude immediately jumps to action. Dude took on that freaking military. Same with old boyfriend, who's not really boyfriend. He tries. These people are legitimately good human beings, and I enjoy their company and their actual wherewithal. And it's not just the military being, ooh, ah, oh, military. Oh, but do what the job is. You can see the point from everybody's perspective. Yeah, are some of them cliche to the point of cartoonishness. Oh, hell yeah, like I said, there's some issue with this movie. But really, it's just minor nitpicks in the grand scheme of things because the focus of the movie is where it should have been from the get-go. The Transformers. Bumblebee coming into his own. He lost his memory and was scared and needed a helping hand. And the main girl, she was, well, not scared, but she was hurting from the loss of her father and feeling that everyone was trying to move on and forget about, which is a legitimate stage of grief. And together they actually raise themselves up and become better human beings and better Transformers out of it because of the whole ordeal. It makes me sad that knowing that after this film, we go straight into the Transformers, the first one. It's like, you have such greatness here, you should have scrapped it. Start a new franchise without Michael Bay, this is the one you start on, fresh reboot, let it go. 
You had more characterization of most of the Autobots than you've seen before. You had actual designs for them, except for the Decepticons on Cybertron, but you can excuse that away because they're literally mass robots. They didn't have that much time except for Soundwave and freaking, um... Oh, God. Tape recorder. Uh, Razorbite, I think his name was, but... It's like little tongue-in-cheek stuff like that. And even bringing in Cliff Jumper. I didn't know that was a real guy. But it felt natural. So, yeah, if you're going to ask me if you should go see this film, I would say yes. If you actually want to see a good, heartwarming slice of life action flick. Because really, the focus of the movie is not on the action. It's not even on the set pieces. It's not even on the Transformers. It's basically like an E.T. version meets Transformers, which I enjoyed, and a lot of people in the film, and film, a lot of people in the movie theater did enjoy. So, do I recommend it? Yeah. I hope it makes his money back, and if it's a little too late for that now, because my timing is wonderful, definitely a Netflix or a Redbox. This film is what happens when someone actually puts forth effort, actually puts forth some amount of creativity, even though it was basically rehashing old ideas, trying something new and actually making it worth of merit. And not just going out and going, yeah, I make crappy movies, but you'll all go see it anyway. Come on, give me the money. Give me the, that's right, yeah, that's right, I'll take all the money, put it right here, yeah. Oh, I know these are garbage films, I don't got to put any integrity or any work or effort into this. Oh, yep, just, uh, let's see, random hot chick, you straddle that motorcycle, say some smart things, okay, we're good, we're good, okay, boom. Off to go make another bill. That stuff pisses me off to no end, and it's nice to see this film actually took some effort for it. Unlike Holmes and Watson. But yeah, that one goes up after this. Because I'm trying to keep it at least somewhat canonical for when they were viewed. So yeah, you'll see that one next. And afterwards, well, technically I'm shooting it now, but uh, honestly, probably the best film to end 2019, uh, 2018 on to begin 2019. But uh, see you guys later when I uh, shoot my first, hopefully this one doesn't get corrupted like the original Bumblebee, first review of Mary Poppins Returns. As always, guys, I'm Kevin Riley signing off, and I'll see you all next time. Later.